Before we get started, to all you gen fires who are constantly the fact that black and white were hated on too much back in 2010, well, it's 2023 now, kiddies. You're all grown up. Your favorite game's no longer overhated. That goes to Sword and Shield now. And I guarantee you in 10 years, everyone will be talking about how Sword and Shield were overhated and are actually masterpieces of the franchise and storytelling or some bullshit like that. But I'll just decide. I do love... Maybe likes a better word for these games. I do like these games, but I do have some problems with them. One is too many rival fights. Look, I know you have three rivals, but so much explain to me why the fuck you have to fight and Charon or Bianca almost at the end of every single dungeon in that game. Look, I get it. Like I said, three rival fights. But you know how many rival fights there are in that game? 17. Charon has seven. Bianca and N have five. Yeah, that's too much for me. But anyway, despite that rant I just went on, the too many rival fights are not my biggest issue. It's the gym leaders, honestly. Pokemon Black and White and all their creativity and smartness started the short trend at most. You must have three Pokemon. And the late four only having four, but that'll be for a different video. Anyway, my problem is that when you're facing the eighth gym, let's pretend to have at least four to five Pokemon. So, you know, at the end of the game, you'll have a full team. So today, I'll be taking the gym leaders from Black and White, changing their teams to be better because a 21-year-old college student is about deciding what's best for the games and the professionals. Let's do this. First up is the Triplets, who definitely don't have any interesting art by the three of them together. What the fuck? No! They're probably my favorite first gym leaders in the entire series, mostly because of their gimmick. You find the gym leader that your starter is weak to. Now, that's a cool concept. You chose the fire pig, you're finding the water monkey. But I'll make these gym leaders more memorable. First up, I'm gonna get rid of the lily pups. <laughs> Next, I'm going to level their monkeys to level 12. I know it's their aces, but hear me out here. I want to give them the Unovan starters. First up is Silent. I'm gonna give him Snivy. So maybe level 14. I'll have the moves Vine Whip, Growth, Tackle and Leah. Snivy can't learn Workup, but Growth is just the same move under a different name, honestly. Then Tackle, Vine Whip, and Leah just what Snivy will know at that level. Now let's do the Hothead Chili, who got the best upgrade from a 30 power Incinerate Pants here to a Tepig. So I know, why is Incinerate only 30 power in Gen 5? It's so weak. Anyway, Tepig will be level 14 with the moves Flame Charge, Tackle, Tail Whip, and Defense Curl. I know Tepic learns Flame to level 15, but my reasoning is Tepic can't learn Workup or any other set of moves at this point, and I want it to be actually good upgrade for Pants here. So I cheated to move one extra level early on. It's not that bad. The rest of the moves, just standard moves Tepics will know at that level. And finally, we're at Crest. You'll have Oshawa at level 14 like the other starters. Moves will be Water Gun, Focus Energy, Tackle, and Tail Whip. Water Gun for the main stab, but Focus Energy is the main move. Since Oshawa, like Tepic, can't learn any set of moves at this point, but it gets Focus Energy. Focus Energy raises your crit chance. It's a great replacement. And hey, since the enemy, it'll always crit. Because that's a motherfucker. Other moves are what the auto knows at that point. And that wraps up Giant and City's gym leaders. One, I guess technically three down? I don't know. Either way, seven more to go. Next up was the Whitney of my generation of Pokemon players. Lenora. And I gotta say, they knocked it out of the park with this gym leader, honestly. Like, I don't think there's any changes they need to make. Her team is a bitch to deal with as it is. Herdier has Intimidate, and not many Pokemon you can catch earlier on wants to get takedown from a Herdier either. And once you defeat Herdier, Watch will come out with the 140 base power retaliate, not to mention can put you to sleep, and has Crunch. One of the strongest moves this early on. And look, I know, Watch Out's stats suck in the wrong one, but early on, this thing is one tough bastard to deal with. But you know what? In the spirit of this video, I'll give her another team member. It's my favorite deer Pokemon, Deerling. Deal will be level 18 with the moves Double Kick, Fan Attack, Leech Seed, and Retaliate. Deerling's addition is honestly just for Rock and Roll. Even though Rock and Roll isn't bulky enough to handle the other team members, might as well have a Pokemon I can hit super effectively, though. And that's Lenora's team. Like I said, Deerling is honestly not needed, but for the spirit of the video, I added it, because why not? On to the next gym leader. Next up is the guy who has a butterfly on his crotch. Yeah, you ever notice that? It's Berg, who's not an Ice type gym leader, he's a Bug type gym leader. God, that's a waste of a perfect name for an Ice-type gym leader. Anyway, Berg, you are the best Bug-type gym leader. Congratulations! Except, that doesn't mean much. The other ones are meh. Bugsy has a Scyther, but his other two Pokemon are Metapod and Kakuna. Now, bitch from Scarlet and Violet, her ace is a Teddy Ursa. No said of that one. But back to Berg. First change I want to make is to his Whirlipede. Two, actually. Instead of Pursuit, I want to give it Rollout. Instead of Screech, I'm going to give it Defense Curl. You see where I'm going with this. Defense Curl makes Rollout stronger. Have fun with that. Next is Dwebble. I want to swap Struggle Bug for Fury Cutter. Look, I know Struggle Bug is his TM, but it's a special attack, and look at Dwebble's special attack stat. It ain't shit. Fury Cutter is physical, learns it early on, and gets stronger each consecutive use. Levani's next, and honestly, it's perfectly fine. It has a base attack of 103 at level 23, I remind you, and has Razor Leaf. But you know what? Fuck it. Give it Bug Bite instead of String Shot. Give it a physical stat bug move. Why not? It's your struggle, not mine. 
And for his final team member, I'm going to borrow a team member for his challenge mode team in black and white too. It's Carablast. We love to with the moves. Headbutt, Aerial Ace, Struggle Bug, and Endure. Yes, yeah, the exact same move as his challenge mode team. But hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Only difference hit this level 21 in this world. And that is Berg's team. On to the fourth gym leader. Next up is a supermodel, Elisa. Ah, one of my childhood crushes. But I'll never admit it. Anyway, she's like a type gym leader, and her team was annoying. Emolga and Vulture defeated every player when fighting at least at least once in their life. So I want to keep both of them for that reason, because your annoying suffering is my amusement, and some strike cuts also fine, just don't take it to Washington. So for our final team member, stick with me here, Stunfisk. Look, I know, it's ugly, but it's a fun Pokemon. Grind Electric is a great type combination. At the level we fight Elisa, its stats are nothing to complain about. We level 25 with the moves Discharge, Scald, Mud Bomb, and Bolt Swish. Yeah, it learns Discharge this early on. Mud Bomb's also not that bad of a stab move for, for the mid-20s. Skull doesn't counter any pesky ground types you might try to bring, and Bolt Switch because who am I to stop or flow with their other Pokemon? The game of musical chairs doesn't stop here, y'all. And that's Elisa's new team. Halfway done with this video, and honestly, minimal editing needed. Maybe these gym leaders are perfectly fine. Nah. Next up is my favorite gym leader in this game, the big dick American himself, Clay. What's up to love? He wears a cowboy hat and is one of the coolest Pokemon I had in Gen 5. Excadrill. Plus, his theme is the second best theme in the game. We'll get to the better theme later on, don't worry. And his team isn't bad either. It's just lacking Pokemon. So he's the fifth gym leader. He should have more than three Pokemon, honestly. His Croc Rock's fine. No changes needed. Palpitoad. All I want to do is replace Bubble Beam with Scald. Skull TM's found in Cold Storage, which is just south of Driftfield, so he should have a TM. And it's a better move over Bubble Beam, so why not run it? Escadrille is perfect. Three great moves, plus Home Claws to boost attack and accuracy. Mean that rocks like accuracy? It'll never miss then. Kind of strong arm to a final Pokemon here. I already gave Lisa a Stumpfist, and there's only one ground type left that's not legendary that Clay doesn't use yet. It's Golit. Not shit on Golit, by the way. It's a great Pokemon. I was gonna give it to him anyway. Sure, its stats are disappointing at this level, but its typing makes up for it. Ghost Ground can be a bitch of a type to deal with. Not to mention its ability, Iron Fists. I'll be level 29 with the moves Shadow Punch, Bulldoze, Mega Punch, and Iron Defense. Shadow Punch and Mega Punch because the former is Stab, and both of them benefit from Iron Fist. Bulldoze is Stab, and also the TM he has, so why not? Then finally, Iron Defense to help boost its low stats, and that is Clay's new team. He's my favorite gym leader, so anything to make him stronger is a win in my books. Onwards to the sixth gym leader. Next up is the flying type gym leader, Skyline. Everyone, give Skyla a round of applause because she's the first gym where I'm changing most of her team. Yeah, wait, that's probably not a good thing, is it? First up is a Swoobat. Look, I like Swoobat. Hell, I love Swoobat, but it suffers from the unfortunate fact that this is another psychic flying type that was added to generation and is better than it in every single way. So the replacement is obvious. Sigilyph. The only thing Swoobat has over Sigilyph is that Swoobat is faster. That is all. All of its other stats are lower. Sigil will be level 33 with the moves. Psybeam, Reflect, Light Screen, and Air Cutter. Psybeam and Air Cutter are the strongest stabs it gets at this level. And the screen moves are here, so Sigil is going to meant to be the first in the lead, so it's good to get those screens up early in the fight. Next up, I'm placing our Unfez. You know, it's an Unfez, and stats and move pool speak my reasoning. So I'm going to replace it with one of my favorites, Arkin. Sure, defeat it sucks, but even as an Arkin, its stats are still great. And also learns Acrobatics, or TM move, she gives, because for whatever reason, Barely any flying types to get in. Since I got rid of Swoobat, no for Pokemon, no acrobatics. That's a different tangent. Or can be level 30 with the moves. Acrobatics, no shit. Ancient power, double team, and crunch. So acrobatics, no item, 110 power plus stab. I assume that's why reasoning is good enough there. Ancient power, since it's special, is actually pretty decent, and the chance to raise all the stats is nice. Crunch for coverage, sure a few levels early, but bite me. Get it? And finally, double team to be annoying, and also to avoid trying to get hit into defeatist. Ace Swana is fine. I mean, it lacks diversity in its moveset, but that's just a problem with Swana in general. All it learns are flying and water type moves, so yeah, I can't do anything about that. And for a Fountain member, I'll be giving her an Amolga. Look, I know Lisa has two of these, but it was either this or choose between Ruffle and Bulby. This is the best option. And hey, it learns Acrobatics, so a bonus reason to be on the team. Speaking of which, it'll be level 30 of the moves Acrobatics, Electro Ball, Pursuit, and Thunder Wave. Alright, so why Acrobatics is awesome. Electro Ball is a move that gets stronger the faster you are than your opponent. And with Thunder Wave, guarantees a process on your opponent, slowing them down, and also making Electro Ball stronger. And finally, Pursuit for added coverage. And that is Skyla's new team. Three fourths of the gym leaders are done. On to the seventh gym leader. Next up is the gym leader and actor, Bryson. Home to Icarus City, the best team in Pokemon Black and White. Yeah, I said it. So here's the awkward thing about Bryson's team, though. He's a nice type gym leader. But the thing is, he already has all three of the non legendary ice type families on his team. So in order to fill up his team, I have to give him some repeats. Before that, though, I want to make some changes to his default team. Vanillish, it should know Ice Beam by now. And for, for whatever reason, it has Astonish on it. So goodbye, Astonish. We're getting Ice Beam. 
I would get rid of Frost Breath too, but it's a TM, so I kind of had to keep it on his team or moveset. Now that that one change to his base team, let's add his next Pokemon. I was really going to give him another Cryogonal. The only difference was going to have Light Screen instead of Reflect. Well, I am giving another Cryogonal. It's going to be more of a bigger difference than that. It'll be able to have the moves Light Screen, Rain Dance, Frost Breath, and Flash Cannon. So this move, I made it for setting up for his other Pokemon. Light Screen and Rain Dance to help the other Pokemon. The former boosts his special defense. Rain Dance begins Fire Time moves. A major weakness for his team. Probably the main one you'd bring. You know what? I lied earlier. I made a severe lapse in my judgment when I said I was only doing one change to his original team. I'm changing his Beartex ability to its hidden ability, Swift Slam. Slush Rush wasn't a thing yet, and it gives him a bigger reason to set up range so his Beartex speed is doubled. With that attack stat, yep, Beartex is so back. Is that what the kids say? And I guess for his final team member, I'll give him another Vanillish, but the catch is it'll have his hidden ability, Weak Armor, because why not? Look, I'm extremely limited here, and as much as I want to give him a Kirum, that's just too much. I can't. So we love 37 with the moves. Ice Beam, Flash Cannon, Frost Breath, and Taunt. Ice Beam, best dab it gets. Frost Breath is a TM, so kind of had to have it. Flash Cannon TM is found to a Mountain, which is connected to a city. And finally, Taunt to go with the weak armor ability, since it gets hit by a physical attack. Its defense drops, the speed stat rises, and Taunt forces you to attack. And that is Bryson's new team. Up next is the final gym leader. So, there are technically two 8th gym leaders, Drayden and Black and Iris and White. I don't know why they really did this. The only difference is their Pokemon genders, and like one of their Pokemon has a different ability. That's it. So, I'm just going to edit Drayden's team and call for both of them, since there's a reason for me to also do Iris's team, too. And just like Bryson, there are only three non-Dragon families in Black and White that aren't legendaries. Well, I guess it's still better than the first two generations of Pokemon, where there's two Dragon Mats with only two Dragon type lines. Anyway, I first want to edit his Fracture. First, I'm going to give it the ability Mold Breaker. Rivalry is a fun ability, but it hurts you more than it helps since it's a coin flip if you do more damage or less damage. Mold Breaker is just be better consistently. I'll also be replacing Dragon Rage with Dragon Claw. I want to stab Dragon Type move that doesn't provide negative priority, and let's be honest, Dragon Rage guaranteed 40 damage is not as vital and important as it is early on. I'm not going to make any changes to his Dragon or Hacks, and the reason is that Dragon has Rough Skin, and its moves complement it well since half its moves make it move slower so Rough Skin can soften you up before hitting you. And Haxorus, I debated giving it Dragon Claw, but honestly, this thing's a bitch enough to deal with. Giving it Dragon Claw makes this tough Pokemon almost impossible to beat. I know it's the 8th gym, but D-Dance is already busted with these stats. His next Pokemon is going to be easy one, Zoualis. And look, I know Zoualis was at level 50, but I have slim pickies. I'm not giving the 8th gym leader a Dino. So Zoualis will be level 40 with the moves Crunch, Draco Meteor, Dragon Rush, and Work Up. I will tackle the move you'll probably more focus on, Draco Meteor. Drain teaches this move, so it makes sense if one of his Pokemon has it. And funny enough, Zwilus, with a 65 special attack, is the highest special attack than all of his other Pokemon. So given that Zwilus makes the most sense, then Crunch is the best stab for its dark type. Dragon Rush for a physical Dragon type, so after Draco Meteor drops your special attack by two stages, and we're up just to off-balance the special attack drops and raise its attack. For his final team member, I'll be giving him another Dragon, but this one will have sheer force. I'll be giving its moves to reflect that. It'll be low for you with the moves Crunch, Rock Climb, Fire Fang, and Dragon Claw. The only move here that's not affected by sheer force is Dragon Claw, and that's there for stabbies against other dragons. Fire Fang's an egg move, but Drayden's the strongest and a dragon mouse, so he'll have egg moves on his dragons. It's affected by sheer force, hits the ice and steel types pretty well. Two types that counter dragons. Then Rock Climb and Crunch are just powerful moves that are affected by sheer oh! force. And that's Drayden slash Iris' new team, and the final gym leader team. Well, there's another video done. Hope y'all enjoyed. Writing the script made me realize that these gym leaders ain't that bad here. Nowhere near how bad Kalos or Joe's gym leaders are. But there was still enough for me to give slash change to the teams. Have some fun. Well, what'd y'all do differently? I'm actually interested in the comments. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed. Like, subscribe, comment, see you all our bullshit. I'll see y'all later. Peace, bitches.